Heather Burkett, she's having some problems and some chest pains. Also searching for God. Amen. We want to remember her in prayer. Sister Eves is still sick tonight. We want to remember her in prayer. Jada Cisco, she's here, but she's not feeling well. We want to remember her in prayer. If you have an unspoken request and you didn't get it on a prayer request tonight, lift your hand up in the air. Amen. If you're sick in your body and you want to touch in your body, come to the front and let the ministry lay hands on you tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. But as we begin to pray, we're going to ask you to let you come on up to the front and they'll begin to pray for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you tonight, God, knowing that you are able to do abundantly above all more than we could ask or think. I pray tonight, God, that you move in a mighty way, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. 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 Oh, we ask you, Lord, to touch Sister Eve tonight, God. Move upon her, Lord. Touch her body right now in the precious name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord, to touch Jada Cisco tonight, Lord. Move upon her, Lord. Heather Burkett tonight, God, is having problems and some chest pains. We ask you, Lord, to touch her body tonight, Lord, in a special way. Oh,
Slip your hand up in the air. Thank the Lord for what you feel in this place. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Oh, I come to worship him, didn't you? I come to praise him, didn't you? I came to lift him up, didn't you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to, real quickly, I want you to listen to what I'm going to say. Um, the reason we moved the Sunday school meeting to tonight is because the amount of children, uh, and I wanted the parents to be able to get that information. That being said, let me just say this. Uh, children. Um, that are left parents if you're having to leave your children with somebody um, uh, make sure that you know that you leave them with somebody that can help them and not just uh, somebody that can't um, so we want to make sure that that's taken care of I'm going to dismiss the teachers to go ahead and make their way out into the front while they're doing that brother Garleski if you'll sing one more chorus for us amen to get us ready for the word of the Lord how many are ready for the word of the Lord for the Sam Johnson's going to be coming. For the Sam Johnson's going to be coming. He's going to be preaching to us tonight. Amen. And I'm looking forward to being able to hear that a little bit later. Amen. But we're wanting to hear the word of the Lord tonight. than our God tonight. Praise God. Praise God. As the others are leaving, you may be seated. And we just want to continue to give God praise because he is so worthy. Hallelujah. How many love the Lord tonight? Praise God. I know there's more people than that that love the Lord. Praise God. How many love the Lord tonight? Praise God. He is worthy, my friend. He is so worthy. He is known as the King of Kings. He's known as the Lord of Lords. He's known as the soon coming King. How many are looking forward to the soon coming King? Oh man, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to the time when we are going to hear that trumpet sound and we are no longer going to be here anymore, my friend. 
we are going to be out of here. Praise God. And I'm looking forward to it. And don't get me wrong, I enjoy life. I'm enjoying it, you know. Um, we have to take the bad with the good, but I'm enjoying life. Praise God. And you know what makes life so enjoyable is the fact that we have God. You know, life has its twists and turns, and it does things to us many a times that, you know, many times we don't even know what's coming down the pike. But I'm so glad to know that regardless of what happens to me, that God has me in the palm of his hand. And he has you, my friend, in the palm of his hand tonight. So whatever you're going through, just know that God is already able to see you through. Praise God. Praise God. Well, tonight, I am, I don't, you know, normally everybody says I take a long time, but looking at what, you know, the way things are and what I have here in my notes, I really don't expect it to be very long, but uh, I see Brother Jeff is back there smiling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what happens, but I like to let God have his way. And when it comes to the word of God, I, you know, for some reason, I just, I don't even know what time is. You know, many a times I'm out at the grocery store or even at a restaurant, and before you know it, half hour, 45 minutes goes by because somebody decided to say something about the Lord. Well, you just picked my favorite subject, you know, and... uh you know, there's been many a times people are waiting for me at a different location and I get hung up over here because somebody needed to talk. And one of the things I've learned is when somebody has a need, I'm not so quick to just turn that off and just go on about my way. Because how many of us have found that we are in the time of need? And uh, when, it's, when we have a need, it's, we need to let God allow him to do what he wants to do. And so tonight, let's allow God to do what he wants to do in this place. Praise God. Tonight, I want to just, if I can give this a title, just call it Preparing to Meet the King. Preparing to Meet the King. Many of us probably remember Brother Cole, Brother Billy Cole. Uh, he had a nickname of Five by Five. Uh, if you've known Brother Cole, you know why he has gotten that nickname. Uh, but you know what? I only had a, a chance to maybe speak with him on very, very few occasions. And one of the things I found is that is a man who loved God with all of his heart. And I, I really appreciated seeing him at some of the conferences. And uh, I, I admired the way that he would, when he would come to the podium, knowing all of the things that God had done in his life, uh, to see how humble he was when he would come to the podium. Uh, he would make sure that he would address the, the audience, and he would tell them, you know, I am just a man as you are, but then he would go on to say all of the different things that God had done in his life, and, and it's many. Uh, on one particular occasion, um, he was preparing to meet the uh, king of, um, of Thailand, and uh, before he uh, got there, before they would allow him to come into the presence of the king, they had a man who would pull everyone aside who was going to be there as audiences, and they would actually prep the people to let them know what things they can do and what they could not do in the presence of the king. Now, you know, many of us, we don't get that opportunity to be in that type of an arrangement, but I have been in a lot of court sessions, and one of the things before you go to court is they would issue you a, a form that tells you how you're supposed to dress when you get there, because you can't just come in there with shorts and, you know, looking like you just didn't care, okay? Because the judge needs to have total um, respect of everyone that is in their courtroom, and they will say, this is my courtroom. And so you have to give them respect. And so uh, as this, uh, this person of protocol was addressing the people who were going to be there in the presence of the king, uh, Brother Cole said one of the biggest things out of all of the things that they had asked them to be uh, cautious of, one of the biggest things was this. They were never to take their eyes off the king. Now, isn't that something? You could be in a crowd of God only knows how many people were invited to be there, but what they asked was that you were to never take your eyes off the king. And the reason for that was he, if he saw you looking at something else, he would take offense to that 
because he would feel that there is something else more important in the room than he. Now, isn't that something? And I, you know, we here in America, we don't have very many people that we give that kind of praise and honor to, okay? But listen, if the king of Thailand, some of us are like, who was Thailand? You know, what's, the, you know, but, but I mean, don't want to take any respect away, but the thing is, if he deserves that kind of respect and wants that kind of respect and gets that kind of respect, saints of the most high God, how much respect do we need to give to our God? He deserves everything. I mean, if they, if they have to pull all these people aside just to tell them how to be when they come into the presence of the king, how much more should we prepare ourselves when we are standing before the king? Praise God. I tell you what, our God is the Lord of lords. He is the king of kings. And he deserves all of the praise that we can give him and even more. I am so, so glad to know the king of kings tonight. Praise God. And I can say that he is my friend. Praise God. And so preparing to meet the king. As you who have been part of our Sunday school lessons, you know that for the first, uh, well, well, the last 12 weeks, we have been talking about the blood-stained banner. Uh, and you know, the purpose of all of that wasn't so that he could see how many people could come before him and, and how many animals that had to be killed. The whole purpose of that was because he wanted to bring a people before him because he is a God that deserves all honor. He is a God that deserves all praise. There is none that is like him nowhere. We could, you could take all of the kings of this world, line them up, and even with all of their majesty, it would never ever mount to the God that we serve. I am so glad to know him today. Praise God, praise God. So what I wanna do here for the next few moments is Take what the Lord had given us in the Old Testament, okay, and liken it to what we have here today. And this, I believe, is going to be, for me, it, it's a big help because there are many a times when I'm talking with people and their first thing is, the Old Testament, what's the Old Testament all about? You know, what, what's that have to do with us today? But what it's doing is it's preparing us to meet the king. That's his whole purpose. And I'm glad to know who the king is tonight. Praise God. Praise God. In the Old Testament, worship consisted of blood offered sacrifices. That means in order for us to have come in tonight, we would have had to come with a lamb. We would have had to pick the best lamb. We couldn't just go out there and get one that was lost an eye last week. You know, we couldn't get one that, you know, his tail is half cut off. Okay, you know why? Because we were offering this to the king of kings. And so, you know, just like the, the king of Thailand doesn't want to see somebody just looking off into the stars or looking off to somebody else, he wants all of their attention. Well, guess what? If he is going to get that kind of attention, then guess what? Then I need to offer to God something that is worthy of honor, something that is not tainted, something that I didn't just pick up off the street and say, hey, I'm going to just give this to you, Lord. Okay? David, in the Old Testament, there came a time when the Ark of the Covenant had been gone out of Israel for many years. Okay? Over 20 years. And the Ark of the Covenant was, back then, was the presence of God. Now, I don't know about you tonight, but I don't want to be without the presence of the Lord especially for 20 years, <laughs> okay? But 20 years, they were without the presence of God. And so finally, they had gotten to a place, and I believe that it was only two weeks ago that Brother Ease was talking about this as well, okay? When he finally got to the place to where he was able to grasp the Ark of the Covenant, be able to see it again, there had to be a big difference, a big change that had to come apart from their hearts. Because all this time, they had sat the, this here Ark of the Covenant in somebody else's house, somebody's basement, okay? How many of you have a basement? What usually gets put down in the basement? 
Okay? Yeah, stuff that, you know, I, I don't use that very much or I don't need it, so I'll just put it off in the basement. But you know what? That's where the Ark of the Covenant was. It was sitting in somebody's house. But all the time that it was sitting there, somebody was being blessed. How many of us want blessings tonight? I'll tell you what. We're not going to find a blessing down at the local bar. Okay? Okay, it's not going to happen. You know, people like to go shopping. You don't get a blessing shopping. Okay? Now, you know, I guess some of the ladies do. They find bargains. They get excited about that. Us husbands know exactly what that means. That means we're going to have to work a couple extra hours, you know, or a couple extra weeks, depending on how she likes to spend, okay? But you know what? It is important that we take the time to give our God the praise that he is worthy of. When you came here tonight, were you preparing your heart to meet the king? He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And I'm so glad to know him tonight. How many love the Lord tonight? Praise God. Praise God. So in the wilderness, they had a movable tabernacle. This tabernacle was everything that they needed to give praise, honor, and glory to their God. But somewhere along the way, people had gotten lax about worshiping the Lord. And he, he talked to them about that. But many a times, we are in a situation where our love gets laxed and waned in the Lord. And we don't, we don't want that to happen. How many of us have been finding, even over the past couple weeks, that you have been giving your heart to God in a way that you have never done in your life before? Okay? There are some of us here that is in that situation. I'm telling you, that is the greatest thing that we can do. Because what we are doing is we are preparing our hearts to meet the king. Praise God. So in the promised land, they built a permanent temple for the Lord to dwell. And it was called Solomon's Temple. So it had moved from the wilderness into a permanent location. The thing about that location, though, was that it still had the mercy seat. They still had to bring their lambs. They still had to kill their animals. There still had to be blood sacrifices. There still had to be a preparation. We're going to spend our life preparing for the things that God is wanting to give us. How many are finding themselves preparing for what the God has for them? You know? And that's what we're needing to do is prepare ourselves. So in the promised land, they built a permanent temple for the Lord to dwell. And that was Solomon's temple. Today, we are the temple of God. Instead of him resting in a physical mercy seat, he wants to rest in our hearts. This is why we have to prepare our hearts. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16 says this. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye, everybody say ye, are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their what? And they shall be my people. We are to prepare ourselves for God to dwell within us. The world has no idea what that's all about. They think living in this world is all about getting cars and land and money. Everybody knows what getting money is all about, okay? How many have found that the money that they have already received, most of it's already gone again? It doesn't take long for that to happen, okay? <laughs> I'm telling you, there, there has been times when I got so excited because I got a big check in the mail. And I, I mean, it was right to get excited. But do you know how long that excitement lasts? You know, the excitement lasted longer than the check. You know, in most cases, okay? Because it doesn't give us what we are looking for. But I am so glad to know that everything that I need, I find in him. And so I want to prepare myself to meet him because everything I need is in him tonight. How many have found that to be true? Praise God. Give me a second here. I just need to, I knew playing those drums was going to get me all fired up here tonight. Mm. 
So let's look at the pattern that God has given his people in the Old Testament, and let's compare it to God's ultimate plan that we experience here today. In the Old Testament, in order to get into the tabernacle, you had to be a priest. You had to be a priest. You couldn't just jump up and say, hey, I just want to run in there and see what the table of shoe bread looks like. Okay? Uh, you couldn't do that. All right? But in the New Testament, we can come boldly, the Bible says, into his presence because we are made priests unto him. So in the New Testament, we are priests to the Lord. Okay? Let's look at Revelations 1.6. Thank you, Elijah. He's pretty quick at that. 1-6 says this, And hath made who? Us, kings and priests, unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let's go to Revelation 5-10. And has made us unto our God kings and what? And priests. And we shall reign on the earth. And let's go to Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. We are now the priests in the New Testament, okay? So what was happening in the Old Testament was only a shadow of what is happening today in the New Testament. Let's go on here. In Old Testament worship, the priest had to go through the door of the tabernacle. In the New Testament, Jesus said, I am the door. Let's look at John 10, 9. John 10, 9. It says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. We are in the New Testament. And what God has done in the Old Testament was only just a shadow of, of what we are to experience today. My friend, we have it all. I was just talking with somebody last week, and one of their concerns was, you know, as a, as a New Testament Christian, one of the things that is concerning a lot of people is this, is what the Bible is talking about was from older days. How does that affect us today? Well, I'm going to tell you, it's God's word that was written for our learning. He wrote what we have today so that we have something that we can hold on to every day of our lives. Listen, I need direction. Just like we need a GPS to get to where we need to go, and I use, I'm starting to use the thing almost all the time now, okay? Because I'm finding that I get there a whole lot quicker, I save a lot more gas, and a lot less frustration. Okay, because I get totally upset with myself when I get lost. Okay, so guess what? I finally learned that instead of trying to find it on my own, let me just grab my GPS, click in where I got to go, and hallelujah, we're there. Okay, it makes all the difference in the world. Well, guess what? The Word of God, that's why we're using it up here because I think I sat it somewhere. The Word of God is our GPS. That's what's going to get us through. If we're trying to get through life without using the word of God, then, my friend, you are just like Brother Sam without a GPS, okay? I mean, I have been in Reading. I cannot tell you how many times I hate going to Reading because I get there and I just get lost. I mean, it, it, it doesn't even matter if I know where I'm going, I get lost, you know? But, you know, we have to have some guide. And I thank God that he is willing to do that for us. And the Old Testament is that very thing. When we are not sure of what we are doing in today's world, God gave us something that we can look at and say, wow, this is a pattern for me. Because if I don't understand what God has for me, all I got to do is look it up. I can look it up. My friend, you can know for sure what it is that God has for your life. 
We don't have to go through this world wondering. <laughs> but the word of God is real and it's true and it's going to always be true. It's never going to change. The Bible says heaven and earth is going to change. As a matter of fact, he says it's going to pass away. But he says my word will never pass away. Praise God. So that means once you once you hook up to God's GPS, my friend, you don't have to go and get a you don't have to go and renew it. <laughs> you know? I mean, my phone, I, I tell you what, I think they have the thing programmed. They know when about a year is up. Because when a year is up, my phone stops working. You know? And and it's happened so many times, I, I just I would I dare to believe that they don't have something hooked up because every year, you know, now I don't have to worry about Chrissy. She gets her own phone. So now it's Karen and I. But it's every year. I mean, you could just mark it down, you know. But God's GPS, it's never going to change. You don't have to worry about going around construction that wasn't there last week, okay. It doesn't matter. God is going to see us through. And I'm glad about that today. And that's why I'm telling you with everything I have, we can count on the word of God. We can count on it. Don't be afraid to tell your friends that this is the truth. You know, there are some when they start telling their friends about what God has done in their life, as soon as their friends say that, hey, I don't believe in your God, all of a sudden it's like, oh, my God, you know, you don't believe, oh, you know, and, and, and it's a bad day. But listen, my friend, you have to remember, you are the one with the answer. <laughs> you have the answer. Share it with them. Don't be afraid to share it. Praise God. What you have is going to get you all the way to the throne. We are preparing to meet the king, you know? I have sat in some of these court hearings, and people have walked in, even though they got a letter from the king, from the king, from the uh, judge, okay, tell them exactly what they were supposed to wear. Here they come. And the judge has to look at them and say, I'm sorry, but didn't you get my, my memo? And they'll look at them. Some of them have actually said, yeah, I got the memo. Well, that was the last conversation because he just told them to leave, you know? Okay, well, guess what? When we, when the trumpet sounds, if we are not prepared, if we're not prepared, he's going to say, go away. I never knew you. But those who are prepared, he's going to say, welcome. Welcome, my good and faithful servant. Welcome into the joy of the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. He's good. He's good. Now, in the New Testament, well, let me back up. In the Old Testament, in, with their worship, an animal had to die. And its blood had to be shed for pardon for the person who wanted to be pardoned. But in the New Testament, let's, while he's getting Hebrews 9.22, in the New Testament, Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for all of our sins. So in other words, we didn't just come with one lamb to take care of our sin for just this year. That's what, how it was in the Old Testament. And then the next year, they had to bring another lamb. The following year, they had to bring another lamb. Can you imagine how many times Sister Sandra would have had to bring a lamb for her, her children, husband, okay? Dad has 10 children, okay? Yep, here he comes with a farm, <laughs> you know? Here comes, you know? I mean, that's how it was. This is how our sin was pardoned by God. And it would only move it, okay? But in the New Testament, Jesus died for all of our sin. He was the lamb for not only just the Johnson family, not only for the Feliciano family, okay? but for every family of the world. Can you imagine how much that took? We are living in a time when we have the greatest opportunity to give our all to God. 
all of the Old Testament, they could never, ever get to the place that we are today. Look what we have felt here in this building just for the few moments that we have been here. I mean, I'm sweating and, you know, okay? Why? Because this is the experience that God has been looking for all of this time where he and us could be together again, where we can have that fellowship one with another, where he did not have to sit on a mercy seat and just have one or two people who just came into the tabernacle and did their work and then go, no, this is now something that it's done once and for all. Not only that, but the veil is ripped, door is wide open, and now we can come in boldly into the presence of God. And because of that, we can feel the excitement and the joy for having that kind of experience with our one and only creator. There is nothing greater than that, my friend. Nothing greater. And I tell you what, it's not only good for a Sunday night, it's good for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we come right back in here again and just give God praise for all the things that he has done for us. And that's what it's all about. Praise God. Praise God. 922 says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And then what he says is, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. This is why last week, one of the things that I tried to stress very much is that the more that we love God, the closer we're going to stay to the cross. I know it's an ugly place. It really is. But at the same time, it's beautiful. None of us can stand the sight of blood. We don't like to see somebody bleeding, okay? We don't even like to see our animals bleed. But you know what, though? The Bible says, without that shedding of blood, our sins would not have been remitted. And so this is why, when we understand that, we will stay at the foot of the cross. Lord, don't let me leave the cross. Don't let me get to the place where I feel like I can stand up now and, and walk away from the cross because the cross is where I need to stay. It's that blood of Jesus Christ that continually, it doesn't just happen just that one time. What it does is it continually washes us. It keeps us clean before the Lord. This is why he can say to us, if you have sinned, you can come before the Lord and he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. That's what it's all about. Praise God. Praise God. Repentance is a change of mind and purpose, but includes and involves our actions. It involves our action. We can't just say, I repent, okay? Repent is more than that. It's a change of heart. It's a change of mind. It's a change of our heart. We're able now to go in a totally different direction. It, repentance is actually a uh, military word. Okay? When you say repent, you are going one direction, but you are turning around and going a totally different direction. That's what repentance is. A lot of folks didn't really repent. They come, and instead of making a total about faith, they're they kind of start going in this direction. Well, you didn't turn all the way to God, and that's what he wants us to do. Repentance does that. You see? When we say, Lord, I'm accepting what you have for me, it's like it's it's uh, all the way around, my friend, all the way around. Praise God. Praise God. So it's a change of mind, okay? And what that includes and involves is this, hearing the word of God, accepting the word of God, and obeying the word of God. It, it includes all of those things. When that happens in a life, I'm telling you, it makes all the difference in the world. There are many a times Brother Parrish would show uh, some of the films from the, uh, like Christmas for Christ films, where we've gone into some new cities and got churches started. And these pastors, because they were just starting a new church, you know, I mean, many times they were going a couple weeks and didn't have anybody, okay? But as a, with a missionary church just starting, Okay, they would continue to pray, and a family would come in, and what they would do is they would take a picture of them when they first came, but then they would take a picture of them after 
the Holy Ghost hit him. I'm going to tell you. I used to look forward to seeing these pictures because it was a night and day situation. It is amazing. I mean, you can literally see the change that takes place in a life when God gets a hold of them. It is amazing. I'm telling you, the work that God does in our lives, it is amazing. It's awesome because it's something that the world cannot do. I mean, they try. I mean, you look at these magazines, you can see all the, all the money they put into trying to look apart, okay? But guess what, my friend? You follow these people several years later, and you know what? They look horrible. I mean, the skin is getting bad. I mean, it, uh, it's amazing what this does to them. But you know what? You look at somebody who's been living for the Lord once, and you just watch them as they age. You know what? It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing because they're allowing God to be the one that is taking care of them. Praise God. Oh, it, it matters. It really does matter. We're talking about preparing for the king. Preparing for the king. Praise God. Praise God. In the Old Testament, after the blood sacrifice, the priest had to wash at the brazen laver. Okay? He had to do this. Once he killed the animal, now he had to wash at the brazen laver. Okay? Well, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. Says this, the like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. In other words, we don't get baptized to wash the dirt off, okay? But the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In other words, what happens when we are baptized? Listen, this is what happens, okay? It's a miracle. This is a miracle. What God does is the sins that was committed against him in our life. He actually comes in there and wipes it totally clean. Now, I know we have a hard time accepting that because guess what? We have to go back to our neighbor who probably, you know, we made him upset maybe a couple weeks ago. And every time we, they see us, they, you know. Now, look, you, you just got cleaned. New slate and everything. But guess what? To them, no new slate, man. You've got to face that, you see? But you know what's, why that matters? Is because it doesn't matter what anybody else say. That's why we sing that song many a times when people are getting baptized. I'm going down in Jesus' name. I'm going down in Jesus' name. Well, I don't care what the world says about me. I'm going down in Jesus' name. See, it doesn't matter what the world says. And the world's going to say a whole lot, but it, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I know what Jesus says, okay? I'm preparing to see the king. Praise God. That's what it's all about, okay? So in the New Testament, um, did we read that already, First Peter? 321, I think we did. Let's go to Colossians chapter 212. Colossians 212 says this. We are buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. So in the New Testament, we are cleansed in baptism. Without baptism, there is no remission of sin. Okay? There is no remission. So thank God for what he is doing for us. Okay? All right? Number five, before the priest could enter into the holy place, he had to be clean so that he could enjoy the peace and presence of God. So he has sacrificed an animal. He has gone to the lever to be cleaned. Okay? But before he can enter in, all right, he had to be ready because there are some great things that's going to take place inside that holy place, okay? Only things that a priest could enjoy. And here today, we have things that only a man of, or a lady of God can enjoy. And without the Holy Ghost, my friend, we do not have the peace and joy that a person can have through Jesus Christ. The only way to get it is through the Holy Ghost. You Believe me. You are not going to be able to find the peace that God can give you anywhere else. 
I am so glad to know that the Holy Ghost gives us peace that passeth all, everybody say all, understanding. My friend, there are things that's going to happen to us in this world that I'm telling you, it's going to knock you off your feet. But thank God for the peace of God that passeth all understanding. It's not even going to make sense why you're able to stand under such stress. But with the Holy Ghost, oh, man, oh, I mean, you can look at a situation and you'll be able to have the peace of God that only he can give. And I tell you what, that is worth more than any money in the world. There are a lot of people who have just blown their heads off. In the Just look at the past year of how many of these movie stars. I mean, I was so shocked to see Cornelius, the guy who, you know, who did the, uh, the Soul Train thing, you know. I mean, that was way back, man. And this guy, you know, he had to be really successful. But you know what? I'm telling you, it matters none how much success you have in this world. If you don't have God, you don't have peace. And if you don't have peace, you're not, it doesn't matter how much money you have because money doesn't bring you peace. You know, only, the only thing that can give us peace is what God has for us. And I'm glad to know him tonight. I'm so glad to know him because only the peace that he has is the peace that we need. Praise God. Praise God. So, so in the Old Testament, after the blood sacrifice, the priest had to wash at the brazen labor. Okay. In the New Testament, we are cleansed in baptism. That is where it takes place. When you go down in that water, my friend, when you come up, you are clean before God. You have a new slate. You literally get to start all over again. Literally. You get to start all over again. A new life. A new life. Praise God. Can we say hallelujah to the Lord? Praise God. Praise God. What a wonderful God. Praise God. So before the priest could enter in, the holy place, he had to be clean so that he could enjoy the presence of God. Let's look at John, verses 8 and 12. Verse 8 and 12. See, in the, in the holy place, there were three pieces of furniture. One was a candlestick, okay? It's a candlestick it had actually seven candles on it, all right? Now, when the priest would walk in, this was the only light that would be there, all right? Also, there was a furniture there that was the altar of shoe bread. It was made fresh every day, okay? And because there was 12 tribes, there were 12 loaves. Listen, I'm going to tell you, when you are studying the things that God has done, you're going to see that nothing is done by accident, nothing. Literally nothing. This is why I encourage people big time to please study the word of God. And don't just stay in the New Testament. Look at the Old Testament. If you want to know about God, you go to the Old Testament. If you want to know what he likes and what he doesn't like, go to the Old Testament. If you want to know what his emotions are like, go to the Old Testament. Because you are going to see how God dealt with his people. And it's very emotional. There are times when God was very upset, and you'll see how God acted when he was upset. Excuse me. There were times when God was very, very happy, and you will see God show his happiness. Okay? It's in the Old Testament that you see it. You're not going to see that in the New Testament. Okay? Because the Old Testament, God is dealing with his people. And for, for all of the Old Testament, he's trying to bring them back. And so you see a God who's reaching out to a people who is not reaching back to him. And you can see the hurt that comes over him. And so when he reaches out to us, you already know that it's a God that is filled with love. It's a God that hurts when we don't reach and respond back to him. It hurts him. It really does. And none of us like to be hurt. You know what it feels like when you're hurt. <laughs> well, guess what? The Lord gets hurt. And the Bible says that we are, we're made in his image. Okay? We are made in his image. So when the things that we go through, the Bible says that he, he's touched also. He's a high priest that feels the same things that we feel. He cares about the things that we care about. My friend, when you, when you are coming to the Lord, you're coming to somebody who really does sincerely love you. And he really does care for you. This is why when he says, talk to me, pray to me. 
okay? My friend, feel free to do that. Feel free to do that. I can't tell you how many times during the week somebody will say to me, Sam, can you pray with me? I don't know how to pray. And I, I mean, after we're done praying, they're looking at me like, it's that simple? I mean, because I'm just talking with them just like I would talk to anybody here because he's listening. And I know he's listening. And I tell you what, when you know that he's listening, listen, you know what it's like. If you've got two people sitting in front of you and you are given instructions, okay, you know if they're paying attention, okay? The one that's looking at you and nodding every time you say something where you see that a nod is needed and you see that, you know that they're with you. That other person, you know, if they're looking above you and around you, you know that there's no need to give them a pop quiz. You know what's going on, okay? Well, listen. God is the same way. He knows. He knows. And so when you're talking to him, know that you are talking to somebody who definitely cares about you. It's not very difficult. We are blessed in the New Testament to be able to talk to God anytime, anywhere, knowing that he is listening. And you know, it was like that even then. They could talk to him then, but the relationship was definitely different. You see? Now we have God in us. He's here. Man, I don't have to go anywhere to talk to him. He's right here. (laughs) Oh, and I tell you what, that means something. When it like at 4 o'clock in the the night or the morning, okay, yeah, there's a 4 o'clock in the morning, believe it or not, for some of you probably never realized that, okay, okay. When, When you wake up and you realize that, oh, my heart is heavy, I'm troubled. You don't have to wait until Sunday morning. You can right there just say, Lord, I don't know why this is coming over me, but I'm feeling something that is just very discomforting. I've had, listen, I've had a time, man, when I felt an evil, evil presence in my room. Very, very evil. Okay? I had, I mean, I'm human, so I can't see it unless God would, would open my eyes to see it. But I couldn't see it, but I knew there was trouble in the room. Okay? And it was so bad that I had to get up out of the bed. I had to go downstairs because I knew, I knew that this wasn't going to be something that I can just say, oh, just going to keep my eyes closed and hope it go away. Okay? I couldn't do that. It was one of those things where it was like, it was just troubling me. Okay? And I had to go down and I had to pray. And yes, I had to be there for a little bit. But you know what? I felt when it lifted. I felt it lift. Okay? Listen, God is there no matter what time of the day it is, and it doesn't matter what the situation is. We are blessed to have a God that is right there on time no matter what's going on. I appreciate that very, very much. Praise God. What a wonderful, wonderful God. Okay. Okay. So, to enjoy the presence of the Lord, they had a candlestick in there for light. They had an altar of shoe bread, okay, that they could freely eat of, okay? And there was an altar of incense, now, when they walked into that, into that holy place, they could actually smell the sweet smell of the incense that was there. Now, what do these three things represent to us today? Okay? Somebody get John 8, 12. Did we read that already? John 8, 12. Okay? John 8, 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the what? The light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Listen, those of us today who have the Holy Ghost, you are the light of the world. What is light? Well, if we walked in here, like many times when I'll come in here at night and there's no lights on, okay, that light right there is the only light that many times I will use, okay? As little as that light is, and as big as this room is, that little light gives me enough light to do what I need to do, okay? Listen, if you were to take the darkest of, of any room and just, hand, just hold up a little tiny flicker of a light, that light will give you what you need in order to see perhaps where you're going, depending on you know, what kind of room you're in, okay? Listen, when he says that you are the light of the world, you know how dark this world is getting, okay? Having the light of God in our lives, it really means something today. 
Because that light that God has put in your life is the light that people are looking at when you are walking down the street. That is the light that they see when you are in the restaurant. They can see the light, okay? This is why it's so important for us to allow God to have his will in our lives. Because when you walk into a place, God knows the darkness of a heart that's in front of you. He knows. And so when you come in, he will allow that light to shine like a champ in that person's life. And all of a sudden, that person is seeing the light. And that's why they're going to come over to you and they're going to say, there's something about you. I don't know what it is. But it's because they see the light. And when they see the light, my friend, you need to go ahead and shine the light. Praise God. You need to shine the light. Okay? Because we are the light of the world. And you need to recognize that. When you walk into a place and you can feel the darkness, you need to let the light shine. This is not a time to be like, oh, well, nobody knows me here. I mean, you know, don't do that. Okay? This is, this is a time where, yes, you put yourself down, okay, and forget about it and let God do the shining. You know, that's how you do that. Don't be afraid to, the, to be the light. Don't be afraid. You can tell when something is happening, okay? Don't be so quick to, you know, just kind of shrivel up, okay? Stand. Stand. You know, this might be a good time to just say to the person, hey, how are you doing? You know, because you never know. When you feel that come over you, allow God the opportunity to do something in your life because many a times, I'm going to tell you, many a times when these things happen, they just happen. They literally just happen. It's amazing how many times in a week that I see God do something awesome, man, in somebody's life. It is amazing. I'm telling you, it happens often, very often, so much so that I expect it. I expect it. But now what is it? Is it anything about me? Absolutely not. What it is is recognizing that God is wanting to do something in somebody's life. And sometimes it's just the person that's checking you out, you know, at the, uh, at the checkout stand, you know, and you notice that their countenance is low. Okay, guys, this is an opportunity to just allow God to, to do something, a great opportunity. You know, and you might say, well, man, what, they don't need heal? Like, they have all their limbs? That are... No, but many times it's just a matter of helping somebody's heart be lifted up again. You know, the Bible tells us that we are to lift up those who are feeble, you know? And sometimes when you're at a grocery store, you know what? They had a bad day. They probably just got done arguing with their, you know, somebody at the house and now had to work. They got to work for the whole shift and, and things aren't looking very good for them. And, and if something doesn't happen for them, they're going to be like that for that whole entire shift. I can't stand that. I cannot stand that. And so what I would do is, hey, how are things going? Just something little, something little. And you know what? When they recognize it, uh-oh, they notice that I might be down or something, one of the first things they're going to do, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to offer you a smile. Listen, if you can get somebody to smile, you might as well just start thanking God right there because something just happened. Now, many times we don't see that, but I'm telling you it is a truth. There are many a times that the light that God has given to us, all he wants to do is share it. He, he wants us just to share it. Isn't that what he says? Don't hide it under a bushel, okay? Let it, let it shine. He says you are, you are a light that's up on a hill. Let it shine. How do you let it shine? The Bible says that Jesus went about doing what? He went about doing good. That's the light. That's the light, you know? That person who's, you know, who's making their way over to their car, you know, got their cart and they're making their, you know, just by looking at them, that they're going to have trouble getting that stuff in the car. You know that. Now, why in the world would you still get in your car and drive off? Now, you see what I'm saying? That was an opportunity right there just to be a blessing. I'm not looking for any money from that. I, who cares? I'm doing this for them and for the Lord. You see? Now, how do I know that? Is because Jesus said this, when I was in prison, you didn't come and visit me. And what did they say? Well, Lord, when were you in prison? He says, when you didn't do it to them, then you didn't do it for me. But when you did it for them, you did it for me. So that means every time you hold that door open for that little lady who's going coming out, picture her as being Jesus, if that helps, okay? Picture the lady who's walking with the cart over, okay? She's getting to her car. She has all these things. And you notice that the cart thing is way up, you know, probably about six of car lengths away. There's nothing wrong with waiting a couple extra moments and saying, hey, ma'am, can I take your cart for you? 
Now, to us, we might, what's the big deal? But you know what? There is a God in heaven saying, that's my son, hallelujah, you know, because he gets excited about that. That excites him. When we do good for other people, that's like doing it unto him. How do I know that? He says, if you take a cup of water, a cup of water, that's worth nothing. You can get water anywhere. But he says, when you take a cup of water and you give it to somebody else, he says, you will not go unrewarded. In other words, to God, you have just made God in debt to you is what you've just done. Now, listen. There's a lot of people, I don't want them to owe me anything. You know why? They ain't going to pay me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't going to pay. All right? But listen, if God owes me, you might as well just keep on racking it up. Just keep racking it up. Because guess what? God pays. And when God pays, this is how he pays. Press down. Shake it together. And not only that. It's not that he's pressing down, shaking together because he wants to press it all the way down, leave you with just all the space. He says, and running over. <sighs> you see what I'm saying? See, I'm getting excited already. I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for somebody to bless. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, you know what? And it becomes so true and so real that guess what? When you start realizing, and I'm telling you, try this. And I, I'm telling you, I... I I want to say the word dare because I can't think of a better word, but I dare anybody to just try what I'm getting ready to say to you. And some of you probably have already done it. But listen to this. When you find yourself when you find yourself when you are in a terrible need and you are going through trouble, look for some body to bless look listen i'm telling you this way because i found it to be true too many times when you're going through trouble find somebody to bless find them look for them because what happens is when you bless somebody in the midst of your trouble mark it down you will definitely be blessed by god I'm telling you. So you know what you ought to do. See, sometimes we get worried. We say, well, you know, um, I don't want to do it for that purpose. Do it for that reason. Okay? It's okay. God is saying it's okay. Do it for that. Find somebody to bless so that you can be, if you want to be blessed, okay? If you, how many of us want to be blessed in here? Okay? Yeah. Let's, don't lie now. Seriously. Don't even lie. We're in the house of God. All right? Don't even lie. I mean, seriously, we all want to get blessed, okay? All I'm saying is find somebody to be a blessing to. You don't even have to worry about being blessed. I'm telling you a truth. This is a serious truth. If God would allow me, I'll go ahead and write a book of Brother Sam, <laughs> okay? Because I'm telling you, this is a truth. This is a very truth. I know that I need blessed. And so you know what? <laughs> find somebody to bless. Because God will do it for you. It's a promise. I'm telling you, I, if, if I had the time, I would, just, I would just tell you some of the things that I already see God doing. This has been, the last couple months have been absolutely, terribly crazy. <laughs> okay? Terribly crazy. I, I, just unbelievable. All right? The worst of my life, if I can say it that way. Okay? But at the same time, at the same time, I'm seeing God do things, man, that I would have never, ever seen him do unless we were in this situation. God is, is awesome. He's awesome. So in order to enjoy that peace and that presence of God in his holy place, okay, we have to come through these things of repenting, okay, allowing ourselves to be cleansed by God. That priest, he could not enjoy the presence of God if he did not allow himself to be cleansed the way God had wanted him to be cleansed. And see, when we allow ourselves to just say, Lord, you know what? I want what you want for me, so I'm going to do what you want me to do. When we do that, oh my goodness, you talk about happiness? Every single one of us want to be happy. But I tell you what, when you are making God happy, you can mark it down. You are going to be a happy person. It doesn't matter 
It doesn't matter what kind of job you have or where you live. or It doesn't matter about none of those things because you have him. Let God be your portion. If, God, if I have God, then I got everything. Please excuse my English, but I've got everything when I've got him. Praise God. And that's what makes us happy. That's why people are going to look and they're going to say, you know what? I want what that person has. And, and you know, when they ask you, well, what do you got that's so special? You, you can't pull out $50,000 because it's not that. Okay? Thank God that it's not that because you know how quick $50,000 can go. Okay? That means you only got $50,000 of happiness. Okay? I want a whole lot more than that. Okay? In today's world, that doesn't last very long. How many have found that to be true? Okay? That doesn't last long. I want what God has because what God has doesn't run out. It doesn't run out. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, so they had the candlestick, they had the shoe bread, they had that incense, okay? And we had read John 8. Let's read Matthew 5, 14. Praise God. Praise God. Ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid, okay? Also, that shoe bread, okay? Because some of you are writing these scriptures down. I want to make sure you're getting these. Okay, John chapter 6, verse 35. John 6, 35. Praise God. Okay? And Jesus said unto them, I am the what? The bread of life. So there was shoe bread that was in there. Okay? Remember, we're talking about that shadow, the, that, that form that was there that we are experiencing today. Jesus, in the New Testament, is the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Praise God. See, when we have Jesus, we have everything we need. Praise God. All right? Let's uh, go to Ephesians 6.18. Okay? We talk about we, in the Old Testament, they had the altar of incense. Well, that was that sweet, that sweet smell that was in there. Well, let's look what, what that sweet smell is today. Ephesians 6.18 says this. What's that first word? Praying, and then what's the next word? Always. Look, prayer is just simply talking to the Lord. Now, I know we all know that, right? Okay? But you see the word that's next to it? It says, praying always. Somebody might say, well, what's always? I've talked to some people and I've said, hey, you know, do you know the Lord? And he, yeah, I, I know him. Yeah, we're, we're good friends. Uh, um, when, do you, when was the last time you talked to him? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I, I don't even know how to pray. I'm like, okay. Okay. I've been married for 24 years, okay? I don't know if I could even get away with a day of not talking to her. Uh, uh, yeah, she's not in here, is she? Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to get away with a day. Now, can you imagine not talking to her? Let's take a month. A month. Okay. Now, we've been married long enough that I, you know, I'm sure maybe we can work something out if, if it was that long. But I can't even imagine not talking to her for a month and then turning around and saying we got a great relationship. You, you see, look, you're laughing. See, you see what I'm saying? I mean, it, it doesn't even make sense, does it? But how many times have people said that, yeah, man, me and the Lord are tight. We're tight. Okay, well, you know, how are things with you and him? When's the last time you talked to him? Well, well you know, I said Jesus loves me this unknown and I went to sleep. Well, you know, if that's what, if that's what the relationship is, is like, you know, I, then we don't really know him. Okay? You know, when you care about somebody, okay, guess what? They would have never had to come out with texts. Okay? You, they would have never had to come out with that if it wasn't a big deal. But guess what? We know how important communication is. You know? I mean, it's unbelievable. It's to the point now where on Christmas and different holidays, now Karen laughs at me, but I'm the type of person, I literally, I'm going down. Oh, yeah, yeah, I want to send something to them. You know, then I go down. It takes me forever, okay? 
all right? I mean, because I'm sending out usually around 100 or so, you know? And I mean, and I know some of you are looking at me like, Sam, just 100, Lord have mercy. You know, hey, listen, if you saw how long it takes me, you see why I only get out 100, <laughs> okay? But communication is very, very important. And you know what? I actually use those times, like those holiday times, to actually touch base with people that I haven't talked to any other time of the year. Because I know that by sending them that quick, you know, Merry Christmas or whatever, okay, I know that it's going to keep us in some kind of contact, okay? Especially with some of the clients that I don't get to, you know, don't get a lot of business from, you know? I'll just, you know, hey, how you doing? Merry Christmas to you. You know, I'm hoping it will, yeah, that's right, Sam. Yeah, I think I can, yeah. Hey, man, why don't you call me next Monday? You know, so, yeah, hey, because of communication, okay? Well, guess what? When we communicate with him, he says praying always because there's all kind of prayers, and that's why I use this verse here. There's all kind of verses about prayer, but I use this one here because, okay, it says praying always with all prayer and supplication. Listen, there are so many different ways to pray, and there's different kinds of prayer. You know, there's some prayers where it's like, Lord, I, I need a refrigerator, okay? Okay, that's cool, okay? But then how about, Lord, Sister Sandra needs a refrigerator. Listen, when we pray, it should not all be about, hey, Lord, guess what? It's me again, and, you know, I need this, I need... No, we need to be praying one for another. There are all kind of prayers. Listen, if God sees that you are talking to him, you know what he's going to do? This is what he does. He will actually lay somebody on your heart to pray for. It is amazing. I mean, and sometimes when he lays it on, I mean, folks, I, I've been actually vacuuming the floor, okay? I'm vacuuming the floor. And it would hit me so hard that I had to turn the vacuum cleaner off, go grab tissues, because I'm sitting there and I'm praying for this person. I'm crying my eyeballs out and everything. And it's like, but see, the spirit will come over you and actually have you pray for somebody. It is amazing how that works. It's amazing. I had, there was a friend of mine that was in uh, Merlin. You guys laugh at me the way I say Merlin, but, um, uh, <laughs> uh, but Merlin, okay? You know what I'm talking about, okay? Uh, and uh, I haven't seen this brother for a long time. It, it, several months had gone by, and it had actually gotten to one day the spirit just came over me in a, I mean, very, very heavily. And I started praying for this man. I just started praying. I mean, you would have, you would have thought that I have just lost my house, my car, my, my cats, and everything. I mean, I'm praying. I mean, I, I had to stop everything and pray because the, 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 it was on me so strong. Would you believe I finished that prayer, and probably within an hour, I got a call from the brother. I got a call from him, and he calls me up just to tell me, hey, Brother Sam, I just thought to call you because I just want you to know that everything's okay. Guys, guess what I did? Finished talking on the phone, hung the phone up, and guess what? Me and God had a time, okay? You know what I'm saying? Okay? Because that was just absolutely incredible. I had no idea what was going on. And, I mean, yes, I was concerned, but... Man, I mean, to have him hit me like that, and then he, why did he do, I have no idea, but God will do that. And then there's been some of you in here, man, where God has just been like, I mean, man, I, I can remember one particular time. I'm sitting there, and I'm vacuuming at one of the locations, and man, God put one of them on my heart. And it, I had to stop vacuuming. I had to start praying, and you know, but see, prayer, prayer is very, very important. So that incense, see, that goes up before the Lord. That, the Lord loves that. That's why he wants us to pray. The Lord isn't telling us, hey, man, look, look, stop praying. I, I don't really want to hear from you anymore. You know, that's not him. He wants to hear from us, okay? So prayer, very, very important, okay? Uh, and I'm, I'm going to go on here. Uh, in the Old Testament, and I'm going to finish here. In the Old Testament, the high priest could enter into the Holy of Holies only once a year, Okay? And that was for the atonement and sins of the people, okay? But in the New Testament, Jesus entered once as the high priest 
worthy to go before the Lord and as the blood atonement for all of mankind. And at the same time, he was the very God who loves us so much, approved of the sacrifice, and now says, whosoever will, let him come. Let him come, and I will give him rest. Oh, listen, my friend. He made a way so that we can boldly come before the Lord. It's not just the preacher. It's not just the priest. It's not just those who are in that, uh, that position, but it's for everyone to come boldly. Saints of God, you have the right, you have the privilege to go before the Lord at any time, anywhere, and for any situation. This is why I love it when, when brother, um, um, brother Jeff, when his job, they were talking about um, some changes that was going to be taking place and they weren't sure what was going to be happening. You know what? You would have thought I was the one losing my job. <laughs> you know? I didn't want to see them go through anything like that. But you know what? We prayed. They came back and said something to the effect that, hey, not only did they, did they change up on that, Man, the brother's working like a champ, you know? I mean, his wife is going to have to probably put a harness on him, you know? But I tell you, God, is he cares. He cares about all of these things, you know? If it's important to us, it's important to him. Praise God. And I, and I appreciate him for that. I appreciate him, okay? So, in closing, this is what we're going to do, okay? The Bible says this. There is only one way to God. We do not want to forget that. Thank you, brother. There's only one way to God. All right. Number two, Jesus is the way. See, there's only one way. Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the life. If we want to come to God, we have to come through Jesus. When you are hearing people say, well, we don't know who Jesus is and, you know, he was just a good man or he was a, listen, my friend, if they're not willing to have a Bible study with you at that point, you might as well just turn around and walk away, okay? Because, listen, if somebody's trying to say that my Jesus is not everything, then they do not know anything, okay? Okay? Because Jesus is it. I mean, if we miss him, the Bible says there is no other salvation, <laughs> okay? So if we don't accept him, we're missing out on the whole deal, Okay? So we need to take to accept him, okay? Jesus is the door, as we see in John 10, 9. The Bible says he is the door. So if we want to come to the Lord, we've got to come through the door. And Jesus is that door, okay? So if we miss him, we miss the whole deal, okay? When we repent, we die to our sins, just like Jesus died on the cross. There has to be a death, my friend. We cannot ex just come walking in without dying to our sin there must be repentance the bible says if there's no repentance there is no remission of sins okay so we need to have that also when we are baptized we are buried the bible says with jesus we are buried with him in baptism okay also when we receive the holy ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the spirit gives the utterance we are risen with him in other words we are resurrected in a new life. Praise God. How many of us have the Holy Ghost in here this, morning, this evening? Praise God, man. The Holy Ghost. It gives us a new life. Our, our lives are changed. Our minds are changed. Our direction is changed. Praise God. That's what it's all about. All right? Just like Jesus was glorified, we will be changed and glorified with him when the trumpet sounds. How many are waiting for that trumpet to sound? Praise God. And then finally... We are born again of the water and the spirit. Some people like to just kind of make it so that there's no such thing as the real water and all those things. But listen, my friend, we've got to go by the way of the water and the spirit. Because he says, unless you are born of the water and the spirit, then we will not see nor enter into the kingdom of God. You know, back in the with, the, with the tabernacle, they had the holies of holies. This was the place where no one else could go except the high priest and only once a year. But my friend, 
when Jesus died on that cross and he paid our sin debt, that veil ripped all the way in half. We are now able to go in there boldly before the Lord. We're able to bring our supplications before him anytime, anywhere, and any day because he cares for us. And by his stripes, the Bible says, we are healed. So we can come to the Lord anytime. Praise God. And that's what it's all about. So just like they had in the Old Testament, we now have a greater, a greater salvation that is taking place here today. How many are thankful for what God has done for them? Oh, are you thankful? Are you grateful? Praise God. Let's give the Lord praise as they sing. God bless you. And very soon we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon we are going to see the King. going to see the king hallelujah hallelujah we're going to see the king well no more dying there we are going to see the king no more dying there we are going to see the king see the king are you preparing to see the king tonight praise God and you know we never know when that day or that time is going to be and that's why we have to be prepared someone said it this way I stays ready so I don't have to get ready praise God and that's the way we want to be we want to be ready praise God what a wonderful God we serve hallelujah well um, I guess we're going to go ahead and be dismissed and those of you who have uh, who are waiting for somebody who may still be in the meeting, uh, just uh, if you just kind of hang tight. Those of you who need to leave, you're certainly welcome to do that. Um, and uh, we'll see you back here Wednesday evening for Bible study. Okay. God bless you all. Shake hands and be friendly. <laughs>